Ashton, and welcome to Ashton Gallery. I am here today with Kara Greenwell. Kara, thanks for taking time out to come visit with us today. Of course, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Oh, I like to hear that. Hey, you know, when I first met you, I, how many years have you been here? Two, three, about three, I think. Yeah, yeah. I remember you came in. It was a sad time in your life, and you came to art. What brought you to art? Um, you know, I think that art has very much always been a part of me. I like to joke that I have, I was born with a split brain personality. My, <laughs> my mom was an art teacher and my dad was an attorney and I'm kind of cut right down the middle between analytics and creativity. Um, and art was really instrumental for me as I was growing up, but somewhere along the way in adulthood, I, I lost my path and um, you know went down a, the business route and, and then I came upon a you know struggling personal time in my life. We were trying to expand our family and things weren't working out the way that we planned and kind of in my time of need I realized I really craved a creative outlet and um, you know I saw Art on 30th as a place to to take some painting classes and I'm telling you I walked into your abstract class, intro to abstract class and it was like the heavens parted and the angels started singing and I felt like I had found hope. Wow, what a nice thing to say. Because <laughs> I know when I met you, you told me you have a is it a master's degree in business from Harvard? That's right. And I'm going, and here you are in the art gallery. Okay. Um, but now it makes sense when you're talking about having two personalities. That's right. It's that right. It makes complete sense. And you know, I, I, I'd done a lot of art when I was younger, but I never delved into the abstract realm. And I think part of what appeals to me so much about abstract painting is that I get to tap into both of those sides. It's, mm -hmm. it's very freeing. It's you know, quite the release but you're also constantly making decisions because you have no idea where you're going. So yes. you do actually you yes. know, use that analytical side of the brain as well. So that's why you like abstract art. That's right. Wow. And have you always liked abstract art or has this just came to you? Um, you know, it's funny because, I, again, I had never really tried abstract art, but I realized that I've always been drawn to it. When I look mm -hmm. around my house, most of the art that I've bought over the years was abstract and it were wow. a version of abstract. So I think it's probably always been there. I just didn't know enough about it. Hanging out. Yeah. Hanging out. Yeah. The yeah. background. It was waiting for me to be ready, I think. <laughs> well, you're definitely ready now, girlfriend. You are definitely ready. ready. Um, let me see. How long have you been painting now? About three years? Yeah. Just about three years. And you went and got a studio at Hillcrest, didn't you? I did. What's that been like for you? It's been incredible. Um, you know, one of the things that I quickly figured out in, um, while, while taking classes and starting my painting practice was that it's fun to challenge yourself to go big. And um, for a while, I was, you know, painting in my home garage studio like so many of us do. And I was tr constantly tripping over canvases and paint was everywhere. And every time we had somebody over, I had to quickly clean up. And, um, you know, my, my kids were home during the pandemic. It was, it was madness. And uh, I finally, you know, decided that it was time to take myself and my art career seriously. And I remember sitting down one morning and journaling and saying, you know, I'm ready to consider getting a studio space, but I'm not going to rush it. I'm going to take my time, and we'll just see what happens. That afternoon on Craigslist, I found the most amazing <laughs> place and signed the lease by the end of the week. I'm telling you, the universe provides. No, no grass <laughs> growing under your feet, no, girlfriend. No, it's true. No, I've noticed that about you. You take action. I You're an action kind of girl. I love that about you. And in fact, you took some action to get a residency, didn't you? I did. Talk to me about that. I will, really, yeah. This is my latest, um, my latest art adventure. I'm really excited for it. So I, um, you know, again, decided I just, I, I love learning about art and um, having the time and space to really immerse myself in my practice is something that's hard to do with day-to-day -day responsibilities. Uh, so I thought that a residency program might be a good way to dive a little deeper. And so um, I applied actually last year to uh, a residency called Cha North. It's part of Cha Shema of New York City, but they have a location in the Hudson Valley of New York. And they bring in five to seven artists for a one month stay. And you live and work there and um, you know really go deep on your practice. So I was very excited to find out that I've been accepted and I'm going to be gone for the month of June. Wow. Does this it culminate an art show? or um, they have, It culminates in open studios open and students. then they do have an annual art show um, that's juried from among the residents there. So wow. keep your fingers crossed for me. <laughs> Both of them are crossed. Uh, there they go. Thank are. you. Uh, 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 that sounds so exciting. Congratulations. Those are not easy to get, so congratulations. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm a little bit terrified. 
<laughs> but I, I think just having the concentrated time to do art for four weeks straight, can you imagine? <laughs> it's amazing. 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 Yeah. amazing things. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see, <laughs> can't wait to see <laughs> what you come back with. Now, you know, some artists talk to me and they go, oh, Kate, okay, I'm not feeling inspired. I don't feel inspired. What do you do when you have that? I'm not, I'm not feeling the mojo. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Um, so most of my work, uh, the inspiration, almost all of it comes from within. I sort of am doing an emotional dump. So <laughs> sometimes that relates to current events that are going on, out, on outside, and sometimes that's just what I'm processing internally. But when, when that's not, when I, when I have trouble tapping into that, I tend to pick up just a very small work um, and I, I work either standing up or on the ground. Those are my, and I'll put a small work on the table and I'll just start playing and drawing and doing whatever stuff. paints are close, just to loosen up, just to get into the flow. Between that and putting on some music, um, I love to like aromatic candles while I'm painting, you know, just anything I can do to tap in. So you just walk right into the water and drink. I do. I mean, I think that's the only way to get over that block, right? Yeah. And usually, once I start playing for a little bit, then, I'll, it, comes. then it comes. Is that interesting? Yeah. It comes when it comes. It does. It Whoa. does. Okay. And so, some days, you know it doesn't. I mean, some days you are just battling in the studio. Yeah, yeah but, that's true. But some days that magic happens. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of magic, did you, uh, is there an artist, some artists have a favorite artist, like, this is the one that most inspired me? I don't know if I have one. Um, um, I have a couple. Okay. So I, I have always been really inspired by Cy Fwambly. Um, I, I like his use of large scale, of some brilliant colors. Uh, I, I think he does it, you know, very gestural work, but it's also um, some of his things are quite simple. And one of the one of my personal challenges as an artist is kind of holding back mm -hmm. and using a little bit more restraint with my work um, and, and juxtaposing all of the emotional gestures with a little bit more minimal presentation. So that's something I've learned from him. Um, and I was telling you, I think I mentioned another time, I swear I would never do drips. <laughs> and if you look around, I have drips all over uh -huh. the paintings. I'm going to see this one. There's some serious drips. <laughs> There's some serious drips. <laughs> so that, that comes from Cy. Um, I like Helen Frankenthaler. I like the four paint. That's been fun. Yeah. Um, and who else? Jorge Luis Santos uh, was an artist that I learned about in one of your classes. And that uh, really helps solidify my love of mixed media. Uh, I joke that I will it, you know, gel down just about any scrap of anything I can find, <laughs> including the kitchen sink. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of artists that inspire me. Wow. Yeah. Those are, those are kids, the kind of the mid century greats. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, they inspire me so much. They did. They did. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite piece of art? <laughs> or even among the pieces that are here okay. with us. I know you've met. Uh, Kara's a lot more art. These are just the pieces with us today. That's true. Um, okay, let's see. Well, of the pieces here today, I probably no surprise to you. I'm going to go with this one. I have, <laughs> I have a very strong affinity for blue, <laughs> um, particularly turquoise or anything in that area. Uh, so that's why this one, you know, just the color sings to me. Um, and, I, you know, I like the use of all of the gesture and the divided canvas, I think that was a, a fun play. Mm -hmm. um, you know, another piece that isn't here today but that I will never give up is uh, a piece that's hanging in my home and it was the first piece that I ever got into a gallery show. And Ashton Gallery was the first gallery where I was privileged to show my work and, and then I was shortly thereafter accepted at a gallery in Los Angeles and that was when I felt like, oh, this is something I can actually do. Right. <laughs> is that when you began to feel like a real artist? That was when I began to feel like I could do it. I think it took a lot more shows than <laughs> one or two before I felt like a real artist. Do you feel like a real artist now? I do. I do. Because I you are. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I do. Wow. It's, it's a big moment when you say that to yourself, isn't it? Oh, it really is. I, I mean, I recall for the first, I don't know, six to 12 months that I was painting, I would practice saying I was an artist. <laughs> I, would, I would casually mention it to a select few people and just see how that went over because for me it was a real identity change. I went from being a you know marketing executive in corporate America to finding my love for, for painting and really committing to go all in. So it's been a big switch for me. But and you are so all in, aren't you? I am. 
I, I hope that I get to do this for the rest of my life. I hope you do. <laughs> Not I hope you do, I know you will. Thank you. I know you will. I was going to ask you what's your favorite palette, but I already know. <laughs> um, I've watched you do a lot of blue and aqua, uh, and even though we've got a lot of black and gray, I know this is where you tend to go. This is your it default. Is. It is my it's default. default. It is. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, you know, we're, I want to wrap up with uh, a question. You know, sometimes somebody says something to us and we never forget it. It was good advice. Or maybe it was a compliment, but it was like it went in and it stayed in with us. Has that ever happened to you? Wow. Um, I've had a lot of good advice, and I'm trying to think of something that just uh, continues to speak to me. I think, um, you know, someone who has been a mentor of mine here through Ashton Gallery, uh, Roberta Dwyer, is a wonderful artist and just such a great, warm, compassionate soul. And she uh, has really, some advice she gave me really helped me get out of my own way, and, it, and it's just get out of your head and just do it. Like just paint over it, just do it and go for it and it'll be great. And oftentimes when I find myself a little bit paralyzed about where to take a painting next, right. I can kind of hear Roberta in the back of my mind telling me, just do it, just go for it. And you do. I mean, I've had the opportunity to watch Karen paint many times and you attack. <laughs> it's a good attack. <laughs> it's a physical process. <laughs> I, 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 I said, I feel sorry for that canvas because it's coming up whether it wants to or not. It's true. Cares on it. <laughs> you know, I think uh, Kristen Guest, another another teacher here, mentioned action painting. That was the first time I'd heard that term, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's what I do. <laughs> you, 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 some people are real thinkers when they paint. Yeah. You are not. No. You're a Let's just make it happen. Mm -hmm. Kind of good. That's right. Wow. It's been delightful to talk to you, Kara. Thank you. Thanks for, Thanks for having me. With us. And again, Kara Greenwell.